So you need to make a cheap and cheerful charger for some oddball lithium battery that you have. How do you do it? I'm going to show you. So I just built this oddball 50 volt lithium titanate oxide battery pack and I need to charge it. Well, I don't have a charger for it. In fact, nobody really makes a charger for it. So I need to make one and I need to make it, well, inexpensively, let's just put it that way, with stuff that's easily available. And I figured this was useful information because you may have a similar situation. So really, all you need to charge any battery is a power supply. As long as the power supply puts out the voltage you need, it will charge the battery. But there's a big but, and this is an important thing. If, for whatever reason, the supply you have to use must be current limited, if the battery is discharged and you hook it up, to the battery to charge it, it's gonna draw more power than the charger can provide and melt down, burst into flames, just generally fail. So how do you make an easy current limiter? Well, you probably already have one somewhere in your house. Just use a light bulb. By the way, I apologize for the appearance of my hands. It's been brutally cold outside and windy too. And anytime I have to go out there and do stuff today, I spent about an hour outside and also in the garage making these little bits as well, where it's also quite cold. Uh, this is wind chap stuff. It's, it's, it's not pleasant. Don't like it, but you know, thought I'd mention it just so you didn't think I had leprosy or something. Anyway, on to the current limiter. So a light bulb in and of itself is inherently a current limiting device. In fact, don't laugh, some really expensive high-end industrial current limiters use light bulbs. Now, their resistance does change with the temperature of the filament, so when you first power it up, there's going to be some inrush current, so you have to take that into account, as well as what your charging current is going to be. Now, in this case, this power supply, which I'll put a link in the description below if you want to pick one up for yourself, is variable from zero to 48 volts. Now it overshoots the 48 volts to about 51 volts and I need 50.4 volts. So that works out really well. But you're saying, Alex, what if I need more? Well, you may actually sometimes have to, you know, put some of these in series. The only thing you have to look out for is to make sure that they're isolated. In other words, there is no direct connection between any of the inputs and any of the outputs. That also includes capacitors but that's a different video and that's sort of beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. I'm going to start assembling this while we're chatting. This is a relatively low power charger, even though this is a 10 amp supply, it's not really going to provide much more than about half an amp of current. Now you can start getting fancy and increase the current amounts. So how do you select the light bulb size and all that? Well, Again, this is cheap and cheerful. You're not looking for, you know, super high speed charging, which incidentally, charging batteries at a high speed is bad for them. So on the bright side, even though this is only about a half an amp charger, even though the supply can, the power supply can output 10 amps, although it's a Chinese 10 amps. So let's call it a real five amps. So now I have to get to the part that I can't actually see from here. The light bulb inherently limits the current. You can add more light bulbs in parallel for more current, or you can simply add resistors along with a light bulb. Now I do like the light bulb idea for one reason and one reason alone is it lets you see the status of the charge without having to put a meter on things. There's another thing that's important to note. This will not balance the cells. You will have to do that manually if your battery does not have a balancer built into it. Now, a lot of bigger, more expensive batteries already do have a balancer built in, but that's something you should be aware of just in case yours does not. So I already made these tabs ahead of time, like I mentioned earlier, just because this is pretty basic. But it's a nifty idea, and I thought I'd share. So, yes, indeedy. You are talking about a light bulb. Who would have thunk it, right?
et voila. And that is it. Just screw in our little old school light bulbs. See, they're still good for something. This is one of those GE reveals. That's why it looks a little magenta pink in color. All right, let's plug this thing in and see if I'm lying to you. All right, set to 51.3. Now, normally, if there was no light bulb here in series, if I shorted these two alligator clips, well, the power supply would go poof. But because we have a light bulb, that does not happen. See, light bulb lights. Let's see, power supply. Actually, I did measure this, uh, this meter on the supply. It's actually pretty accurate. It's within a tenth of a volt of my actual meter. So the question you all are wondering is, well, how much current is this providing? Because it's going to limit the current. That's a good question. I've set the meter to 10 amps because I don't want to blow it up. And let's connect it and see what this thing can output. Roughly half an amp. So it's a half amp charger. And the cool thing is, as the battery gets more full, it's going to draw less current and the light bulb is going to dim and then it's going to go out completely. That's how you do it. It's just that simple. Just make sure if your battery pack doesn't have cell balancing, you do manually check it while you're charging. You don't want to overcharge one cell at the expense of the others. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go charge the pack and see what happens. So here's my oddball battery. It's a 50 volt, 20 cell LTO battery. It's going to be used for the electric turbo test, obviously. It's only 18 amp hours capacity, but it can output well over a thousand amps without breaking too much of a sweat. So this is all set up. This is in line as the ammeter. All I have to do is touch this to the negative terminal and we'll see what it's drawing. Now, unfortunately, I'm not charging these close to their full capacity. In fact, it's not too far off of their storage voltage. So this may not pull a whole lot of current, but let's see. We know short circuit, that thing pulls about 500 milliamps. Like this, hit 150, but then as the filament warms up, it drops a little bit. About 110, 112. Yeah, somewhere in there. Now it's not lighting up because that's too little current to draw. Now we can kind of fake it by eliminating cells. As we eliminate cells, the voltage will go lower and the current draw will go up and maybe we can get the bulb to light. Let's see. How about in here? Nothing? Nothing yet. How about, how about these? Oh, yep, I can see that. Let's see. See how it lights up? And the current draw jumps to the 300 milliamp region. There's one more cell that we can reach to maybe get a little bit more. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? So if you like this sort of thing, please give me a thumbs up. There's a lot more cool stuff coming up, both electric turbo and heavy load testing and battery stuff and car racing and just all kinds of stuff on this, this channel. I'm also going to start doing stuff for my patrons, like including the circuitry that's inside the battery. Uh, you know, I'm going to put the schematics up on my Patreon page for them. And, you know, we're just going to keep having sort of nerdy fun and racing.